In example one, we are analyzing the centroid of a triangle. And what we need to do in A is, given this triangle OPQ, we need to verify that the point C found at 4, 0, right here, C, we need to verify that that is the centroid of the triangle OPQ. Now we remember that the centroid of a triangle is the point of intersection of the three medians. So a median goes from a point to the midpoint of the opposite side. So Q will have a median, O will have a median, and we need to verify that the point C is the centroid, that is the intersection of the three medians. Well, in order to do that, we need to show that the coordinates for zero satisfy the equation of each of the three medians. If the point four zero satisfies each equation, then we can say that it is indeed on all three of those lines and it is the point of intersection, which would make it the centroid. In B, we are asked to verify that the centroid divides each median in a two to one ratio. So our centroid is right here at four zero, each median, I've drawn a median, I've drawn the median from Q, which meets the line segment OP and ends right here. So we have two endpoints and we have this centroid and we are asked to verify that the centroid divides this line segment, this median, in a ratio of two to one. What that's saying is we need to make sure or we need to see if it's true that there is uh, a ratio of length 2 to length 1 uh, by the division of this median by the centroid. So in order to do that, we're going to find two lengths and we'll see if they are indeed uh, related to each other in a 2 to 1 ratio. I've gone ahead and redrawn a smaller version of my triangle just so I have my key points as a reference while we're going through this problem. So again, we're finding the centroid of this triangle and the centroid is the point of intersection of the three medians. So the first thing I need here to find are the three medians. And in order to do the three medians, I'm going to do one median at a time, I need the midpoint of each line segment. And so what I'm going to do here in order to help me find the median from P is I'm going to find the midpoint of QO. And to do that, I'm going to use my midpoint formula. So I'm going to call this point R. And I know R is XY such that, well, it's the average of point Q and point O. So we have 4 plus 0 over 2 for our x coordinate, and our y coordinate is also 4 plus 0 over 2, which gives me the midpoint of QO, point R, is found at 2, 2. Add that to my diagram. All right, let's look for the midpoint of Q and P, and we'll call that point uh, T. So again, T is XY such that it's the average of our X coordinates and the average of our Y coordinates. I'm just going to go ahead and sub in the values that I have here. I have 4 plus 8 divided by 2 for our x value and 4 plus negative 4 for our y value. So here our x becomes 12 divided by 2, which is 6. y is 4 minus 4, which is 0. And our last mid median, sorry, our last midpoint, the midpoint of OP, we're going to call S. It is xy such that uh, 0 plus 8 divided by 2 for our x coordinate and 0 minus 4 divided by 2 for our y coordinate. Here we have 8 divided by 2, which is 4 for our x coordinate and our y coordinate, negative 4 divided by 2, which is negative 2. So I can label my points here. We have t, which is 6, 0, and s, which is 4, negative 2. That's our first step. We now have all of the midpoints. I can now use some of the formulas that I have for lines 
in order to find the equation of each of these medians. So in order to find the equation of these lines, I'm going to need uh, the slope. So that's what we'll be looking at next, is how to find the slope of each of these. I'm going to begin this part by finding the equation of the line A, sorry, RP. That's the median from P. And so first I can use my slope formula, the slope of R P, that's the median from P, is found by taking the change in Y over the change in X. So here we have negative 4 minus 2, change in Y, and the change in X is 8 minus 2, which reduces to, and I'm just going to work across here, I have a little bit of extra space, negative 6 over 6, which equals negative 1. So the slope of that median right here in the red which I've drawn is negative 1. Well now I can use my slope point formula, point slope formula for a line in order to find the equation of this median. Okay, so we have y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1. And this is an equation that we've used several times now. So I can use one of my points R and P are both on the line. Uh, I'm going to use R because it's just got easier numbers to work with. So Y minus 2, and the slope was negative 1. That's going to get multiplied by X minus 2. Simplify my right side. I get negative X. That's negative 1 times X is negative X. And negative 1 times negative 2 is positive 2. Add 2 to both sides, I'm going to end up with y equals negative x plus 4. And this is an equation for the median rp. And I might want to just note that so I don't lose track. But there we've got rp. Okay, I'm going to use my leftover space here to do the median of another line segment, or the equation of another median, I should say. And we'll go with the median from O. From O, we know it's going to intersect with O and T uh, because this is T is the midpoint of the opposite side here. So the slope first, slope of O T is simply the change in Y over the change in X, and that is. Choosing the point T to be my second point, we have 0 minus 0 over 6 minus 0. Well, this is 0 over 6, which is just 0. 0 over any number is just 0. So the slope here is 0, and you can kind of see that because especially we can see that in our original diagram, a little bit less in this one. This line is going straight across. It's a horizontal line. Maybe I'll tip it there. You can see it now. <laughs> so our slope is 0, and now I can use my slope point formula, uh, and I'm just going to sub in, we're using this exact same formula up here, I'm just going to sub in the points 0, 0, so I've got y minus 0 equals 0 times uh, x minus 0, and we're going to simplify this whole thing out, but it's all going to get multiplied by 0, and then I'm going to add 0 to both sides, so we're going to look at y equals 0, that's the line. Uh, this median, that is the equation of the line, y equals 0. So any point that has y equals 0 is on that line. And we said earlier that our centroid was the point C for 0, in which the y-coordinate is 0. So we're going to verify that that's, that's on the line. That was an easy one. Okay, the last median we need to do is the median from Q. I'll do it fairly quickly. We're looking at the slope of QS is equal to, we've got 4 plus 4 over 2, and 4 minus 2 over 2. And this is, uh, sorry, I'm not looking for the median. That's silly. I'm looking for the slope. Slope is the change in y over the change in x. So we've got 4 minus negative 2 over 4 minus 4. This becomes 6 over 0, and this is undefined. We cannot have anything over 0. 6 parts of 0 
doesn't make any sense. So this is undefined, which tells us it is a vertical line. So the median from Q to S is a perfectly vertical line, which means that any, um, which means that it's the line X equals zero, or sorry, X equals something. In this case, X equals four. And that means that any point x, y that has an x value of 4 is going to be on that line. And we already know that our centroid is 4, 0. Uh, so it is on that line, and it does satisfy the equation of this line. So here we have one of our lines. This is the line qs. Here we have the line rp, equation of the line. And here we have the equation of the line ot. So the median from o, the median from p and the median from Q. Okay, at the very beginning of this example, we said that in order for C to truly be the centroid of the triangle OPQ, it had to satisfy the equations of the three medians. Well, we have the equations of the three medians. We have Y equals negative X plus four, we have Y equals zero, and X equals four. Those are three lines, and they are the medians of the triangle OPQ. And all we need to do now is test, verify that the point four zero lies on all three of those. And in order to verify that, it's very simple. We just sub in the x value and the y value and see if the statement remains true. So for y equals negative x plus 4, we simply sub in our y value of 0 and our x value of 4. And we see if this is true. It is. Then the point c does fall on the median from p, which is y equals negative x plus 4. The other two are even easier. We have y equals 0. Well, the y coordinate here is 0. So on this line, y will always be 0. Therefore, 4, 0 is on that line. On the line x equals 4, the x value is always 4. Well, the point c has an x value of 4. Therefore, it is on the line x equals 4. And we have verified the three lines. Uh, the point C satisfies each of the three lines. Therefore, we can say that since the point C, which is at 4, 0, lies on all three medians, It is the centroid of triangle OPQ. In B, we were asked to verify that the median of each vertex uh, has been divided into a ratio of 2 to 1 by the centroid. So in order to do that, in order to find the ratio of the parts of the median on either side of the centroid, we're going to use the length formula, our distance formula, to find the length of each part. So I've redrawn the triangle so that we just have the median from Q and the centroid and the line segment QS. And we're going to basically find the length of this section of the line segment, so the line segment from QC, and then we're going to find the line segment CS, and if QC is indeed twice the length of QS, then we will have verified that the centroid has divided it into a ratio of two to one. So first, the length of the line segment QC. We're using our length formula, which equals the square root of the change in X squared plus the change in y squared. And we can sub in our values there. We have x values of 4 and 4. We square that. And we have y values of 4 and 0. So we can square that. Well, 4 minus 4 is 0. 0 to the power of 2 is still 0. So here we're just going to have 4 minus 0 is 4, and 4 squared is 16. 
which reduces to 4. So this is the length of QC. QC equals 4 units. Now uh, let's go for CS. Again, using the length formula. I'm not going to write the whole thing out again. But you can see I'll just sub in my points. We have our x values of 4 minus 4 squared. And we are adding our y values of 0 minus negative 2, I should say. Uh, won't matter, but 0 minus negative 2 squared. And 4 minus 4 becomes 0, squared is 0, plus uh, plus 2 squared, which is 4, which reduces to 2. And we can see that QC is twice the length of CS. Therefore, the median QS has been divided in a ratio of 2 to 1. We would need to do the same for all three medians. I'm going to just leave you with this example. The other uh, two work the same way. But there's a little trick when doing the vertical line segment like we just did, or a horizontal line segment like you would have to do um, between O and T. Um, because only one of the coordinates actually changes in those situations. So here, the 4 didn't change at all. The x value didn't change at all. So all I really had to do was say, OK, from 0 to negative 2 is 2 units, and from 0 to 4 is 4 units. Therefore, the pink line segment here is twice the length of the orange line segment. And that strategy will work going across uh, horizontally as well, the median from O. The median from P, you will absolutely have to do this way, showing the length formula. In example two, we will be studying the midpoints of sides of triangles. You see here we have the triangle ABC. And D is the midpoint of side AC, and E is the midpoint of side BC. We need to verify that the line segment DE is parallel to side AB. We also need to, in B, verify that the line segment DE is half the length of the line segment AB. Okay, in A, if I need to determine whether or not these lines are parallel, I'm going to need to have the slope of both of these lines. So for the line segment AB, I see I already have my two points. That will give me my slope, my change in Y over my change in X. But I don't have the points that I need for DE. So I'm going to quickly find the midpoint D, which is the midpoint of AC. And it is found by taking the average of our x-coordinates and the average of our y-coordinates, which equals 7 plus 1 over 2 is 4, and 8 over 2 again is 4. And now the point E is also the midpoint, but it's the midpoint of BC. And same strategy, 5 plus 7 over 2 and 1 plus 5 over 2, and the midpoint there of the point E, the coordinates are 12 divided by 2, which is 6, and 6 divided by 2, which is 3. So here we have E is 6, 3, and D is at 4, 4. Well, there I have my points. Now I can go ahead and find the slope. I can find the slope first of AB, m of ab, which is just the change in y over the change in x. So we have 1 minus 3 over 5 minus 1, which equals negative 2 over 4, which is negative 1 half. Now the slope of de that equals the change in y over the change in x. So 3 minus 4 over 6 minus 4, which is negative 1 half. This verifies, because the slopes are the same, this verifies that the line segment DE is indeed parallel to the line segment AB.
B of example two asked us to verify that the line segment DE is half the length of the side AB. And that word length is our giveaway here. We're using our distance formula. And so we will find the length of AB. This is equal to the change in X squared plus the change in Y squared, and then take the square root of that. So here we go. 5 minus 1 and 1 minus 3. Here we have 4 squared, and here we have negative 2 squared. 4 squared is 16. Negative 2 squared is 4. So the length of the line segment AB is the square root of 20. And for our purposes, I can just leave it like that. Now, if I come for the line segment DE, using the same formula, DE equals the square root of 6 minus 4 squared plus 3 minus 4 squared equals under the radical sign we have 2 squared plus negative 1 squared 2 squared is 4 negative 1 squared is 1 negative 1 times negative 1 right it's 1 and this equals the square root of 5 now to show that these are uh, that the length DE, square root of 5, is actually half of the square root of 20. Um, the square root of 20 can be reduced by saying 20 inside the bracket is 4 times 5. The rules of radicals say that we can separate this into the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. Well, the square root of 4 is 2. So what we have here is 2 times the square root of 5, which is twice the square root of 5. Therefore, DE is half the length of AB. That concludes lesson 3.2. What we did and what we worked with here is learning that we can use the midpoint, length, and slope formulas to verify properties of specific triangles. Sometimes there are several different ways to verify a property of a triangle and um, we also talked about the centroid being the point uh, that divides each median into two parts, uh, with one part being twice the length of the other, and the line segment joining the midpoints of two sides of a triangle is parallel to the third side of the triangle, and it is half its length. That was what we did in example two. Your homework for 3.2 is on a worksheet worksheet titled 3.2, and we're looking at numbers 1 through 11.